Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to tackle a very important theoretical set of questions all under the umbrella of naming chords. How do you go about naming a chord? Now, I have done a detailed video on the Roman numeral analysis system which shows you how chords relate to the scale. So I suggest that you watch that. Uh, you don't have to watch that right now. You can watch that after watching this, but that's a very good supplementary video. This is a lesson or a two-part lesson series. There'll be two videos in order to name any chord which is hurled at you. Either someone plays you a chord and tells you, what is it, you know? But now I'm not, this is not a year training lesson for chords. We've done a lot of year training videos as well. We link up some of the harmonic year training lessons in our description. You can check that out also after this lesson. This is more of a theoretical lesson. How do you name a chord and how do you communicate that chord in a, I would say in an inspiring way to your fellow musicians. Now, chord naming, I think, the way things are done or the way things have evolved in our field has become almost as airtight as staff notation. The chord names are very, very uh, defined, very logical, and they have a, a, a proper amount of sense to them in, to a point that any musician who's collaborating, a violin, piano, guitar, or any member can relate to these chords. It doesn't have to necessarily be piano chord names or guitar chord names. It could be multiple options. However, you do have a few voicing and inversion names. Those I might not cover in this series. Inversions we've done uh, earlier. We've done a lot of voicing techniques as well. This is just specifically how do you name the chords. So let's first look at how to broadly name our chords. After we get into understanding what should be the root, we look at some more fancy chords like slash chords, then we go into tensions, then we kind of have an argument between the names itself, like add, suspended, augmented, diminished, and the extensions, the nines, elevens, and thirteens, right? Before we get cracking, it'll be awesome if you could consider hitting that subscribe button, which is somewhere around our channel. I'm sure you're aware of that. It'll be great if you could hit it. And there's a bell button too, where you will be notified of regular videos which our channel puts out almost daily. And also, this is a very theory-heavy lesson, so my handwritten notes will be available for you on our Patreon page. That would definitely help make this lesson a lot more easier to understand. So you might want to pause the video, head over to Patreon, get yourself a PDF, and watch along. Let's get cracking. So to name a major chord, first of all, let's start with the triad. So you have major... I'm going to uh, do it with respect to C. So C major would end up being C, E, G. So if you look at this, it's basically a major third interval and a perfect fifth interval or a major third between the one and the three and a minor third between the three and the five. So any chord which shares has this sort of intervillic relationship is called as a major chord. And a minor chord is not far behind. It's just this one. So what happens here? It's a minor third with respect to the root. That's E flat. And the same old perfect fifth. So to make or to consider a chord as major, you don't necessarily need the fifth. Well, it's nice to have it, but even if you play... C and E, you kind of imply, hey, the chord is kind of major or C major. Yes, there are no additional notes, there are no extensions, but if, if, you, if you took a bet, playing C major would not cause anyone in your band to, to throw anything at you. If you were to play C major while you heard uh, or you observed someone else just playing C and E, you can easily play that G unless, of course, they don't like that G which is another problem altogether, then that might be a diminished fifth or an augmented fifth, which we'll chat about later. So, this is C major, this is C minor. What constitutes that is the minor third. Now, the diminished triad needs two representative notes along with the root. All the chords, if you name them, they need a root. So, the diminished would be that one. You need a flat three as well as a flat five. A quick trick to remember the flat five would be perfect 5 minus 1. We also call that a, as a tritone interval. Very important interval in music. There we go. 
that's your tritone. Then we have our augmented chord where you take the major third, but in addition to that, you would need another major third with respect to the third. So the C to E major third, E to G sharp another major third. We could also call this as an augmented fifth, as the perfect fifth is raised to the augmented fifth. Okay, gives you a very unclear sound. So the diminish is also unclear because of the tritone and the lack of the perfect fifth. The augmented fifth is again unclear because of the lack of the perfect fifth and the minor sixth or the augmented fifth interval is very very mysterious if you ask me it's not very stable as the perfect fifth is see perfect fifth feels like you're at home sitting on a sofa or something well that doesn't feel like that this is like a horror movie or some such thing here so you're kind of stuck in a spiral like in that Alice in Wonderland movie you feel like you're just in a random in some kind of a trance so these are all important to know, okay? So suspensions now. Uh, I'm going to talk about suspended chords alongside the add chords. So with suspended chords, what you're ending up doing is suspended means no three. Do not play the three. We don't want the three. So if you have this C major chord to suspend it, you can suspend it in two ways. You can either go sus2, where you play the major second along with the perfect fifth, but no three. That's not there. And now you have your sus four. No three, but perfect fourth. Root perfect fourth, perfect fifth. So that's your sus four. This is your sus two. So suspended chords basically means no three. Okay, and this is not to be confused with add chords. So add chords basically will add to the triad. So if you take C major, you can have a C major add two. You can have a C major add four. You can have a C major add sharp four, which is a very Lydian kind of sound. Uh, you can have a C major add sharp five or add flat 6 if you want to call it that and then the same story with minor you can do uh, this is C sus2 but this will be C minor add 2 some people also might say add 9 I prefer to, to use it as add 2 and not bother about the 9s un unless and until there is a 7th uh, in there that for my brain seems to work a bit easily so there's nothing wrong in calling it an add to, I feel. So C minor add to. So C minor. That's the D, which is the add to. So you can play that above the octave. You can play it within as a as a nice cluster of C D flat. And then G. And you could even perhaps do a C minor add flat to the very Phrygian sound it's more Phrygian but you would call this as C minor add 2 so that's the add chords you're adding to the triad you're adding to the major or you're adding to the minor now when it comes to the adding of the sixth interval we already have names for them so if you take C major with the add six add major sixth it would basically you don't call it C major add six you can just happily say C major 6th, no problem. Similarly, you do C minor with an add major 6. You don't want to call it C minor add major 6. That's a, it's annoying to say, isn't it? So you'd rather go C minor 6th. That's the official name. There we go. So all your 6th chords can be named pretty easily. Okay. However, if you do a flat 6 or a sharp 5, you, you'd rather call this a C minor add flat 6. And a lot of these add chords are felt and are observed and used sometimes not as a block of data but in an arpeggiated form. For instance, 
that's a beautiful add to or an add nine uh, sin, uh, setup. That's an add flat six with the minor chord. That's an add sharp five or flat six with a major chord. That's an add flat two with respect to our major chord. So it's good to use them using arpeggio movements and not so good uh, or not always to use them as a block. It may sound very dissonant as a block, I guess, right? Uh, when it comes to sevens, you don't, like the sixth, you don't have to write add seven. You can just write seven. So there are different seventh chords as you may know, but they all are built with respect to the triads we have just learned recently. Uh, <clears throat> now there are many seventh chords available, but all of them are based on the triads. So we've already learned the triads, right? Major, minor, diminished, augmented, suspended, and so on. So if you build seventh chords, you don't have to say add seven. Like you don't have to say add six. Similarly, you don't have to write add seven. So you do... C major with a major 7th, interval on top, we call that as C major 7th. So C major chord with a major 7th interval is a C major 7th chord. And I like to remember it that way because if you think about it, chords also are played as inversions, right? So if you're playing C major in this first inversion, you can tell yourself, okay, how do I C major 7th this? It's already a major chord. How do I make it a major 7th? Just ask yourself, what is the major 7th? B. And where is B with respect to this chord? It's right here. Okay, similarly, you take a chord like E flat. This E flat major. What's its major 7th? D. I could play it there or I could even play it down below. So it kind of isolates that and says major triad plus some other note or some other interval which in this case is major 7th so you have let's go back to our C root so C major with a flat 7 would be a dominant 7th and in simple words we just like to say C 7th close C 7th da 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 with a B flat on the top da 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 B flat now I say B flat on the top but I'm also trying to think it could also be anywhere. It could be B flat at the bottom as well. B flat on the top or B flat in the middle. The quality of the chord still stays C seventh. So we don't say C major add flat seven uh, as some of my students ended up doing in a, in a class. It's just C seventh. So seventh chords are very simple in that sense. Uh, and then the journey for naming seventh chords continues, right? So if you take a minor triad with a minor seventh, we call that a minor seventh chord. You take a minor triad with a major seventh. We don't have an easy-ish name for it. We have to call it C minor major seventh. C minor major seventh. You can write the major 7th in brackets if you wish. C minor major 7th. So C minor major 7th. Or you can write it C minus sign for minor and then do a major 7th. Major 7th also has a triangle sign. So it makes the writing of the chords a lot more easier. So you could consider minus for minor, a triangle for major 7th and a degree for diminished, um, a plus for augmented, sus for suspended and so on and so forth so now if you take diminished variance that's your c diminished bass so you could start with a c diminished chord with a b up top now some people might argue this is a c minor major seventh flat five you could also simplify it and say it's a c diminished major seventh so C diminished, major 7th. I don't use that chord a lot, but it kind of exists. Then you go... Now you may think this is a C diminished chord with a minor 7th. So should you say C diminished minor 7th? No. You say C minor 7th flat 5. You can even say C half diminished. That's another way to call this chord. C half diminished. That's essentially... Take C minor minor 7th, that's your B flat, 
flat 5 you're flattening the G to become F sharp or G flat so C minus and flat 5 and it has a nice symbol which is a the the Greek symbol Phi or Phi used a lot in uh, some uh, scary maths classes so there we go C minus 7 flat 5 then the last diminished option we have would be C diminished with a diminished 7th interval now diminished 7th interval is where you double flat a major interval major 7th interval so C to B is a major 7th you double flatten it which means go down a tone and you get yourself a C diminished 7th chord very interesting to note that this particular chord is just a bunch of minor thirds minor third minor third minor third there we go that's your C diminished 7th so uh, then you have your augmented families augmented major 7th now you could also re-spell this chord you could call this as C augmented major 7th or else C major 7th sharp 5 you could also call this as C major 7th because the G which is the perfect 5th became G sharp which is the augmented 5th G G sharp so C E G sharp B augmented major 7th or C major 7 sharp 5 you can also do C E G sharp B flat which could be called as C a simple way to write it actually would be C plus 7 so you save some space in your book or paper C plus 7 so that would be a dominant 7th up top whenever we don't precede a 7 with major or minor it is dominant 7th it's a dominant 7th kind of chord so a dominant 7th chord has a major 3rd as well as a flat 7 now what you do to the dominant 7th chord could be various things that depends on the 5th, the 9th, the 11th and the 13th interval which we are going to talk about in detail in part 2 of this series. So C, E, G, B flat would be C 7th, that would be C augmented 7th, Don't, not C augmented minor 7th, no, C augmented 7th or C plus on top of top right of the C and under that 7th, okay. That's your augmented and similarly you have suspended uh, seventh chords that would be C sus4 major seventh or C major seven sus4 if you want to call it that then you could do a very common chord this is called a C7 sus4 Cf because it's a C7 it has that flat seven and a suspended chord inside it C flat right now I'd like to also mention that all of these chords there's something remarkable and, and very beautiful about them there's dissonance with less notes and consonance with more notes so if I just come back to a major 7th interval from C you see how dissonant this feels right it's almost unusable at least to me lot of chaos but if I just add that E in the middle well I, I just can't explain this this is just mo mother nature uh, doing its thing it sounds like you're just chilling out on a beach all of a sudden but without that E absolute chaos now we kind of know why because the number of intervals are adding up almost um, uh, exponentially because if you think about it it's just one interval but if I add that E there is C to E which is a major third E to B which is a perfect fifth and you have a tension so it's almost like there is more uh, uh, resolution because there are two resolved intervals major third and perfect fifth and there's only one tension so it's sort of like the good defeats the evil so to speak because there's two goods two peaceful sounds and one annoying sound so it's using these tensions which can create some remarkable sounds in music for example this chord you know, there are a lot of tension in there 
but this chord is very very usable you know or maybe a, a chord like this now without some of the notes it sounds absolute nonsense or it sounds absolute chaos but still a bit annoying but wow wow yes it sounds unstable but it's beautiful because it you kind of know you have a road map where that chord and where the notes of that chord would eventually land to right so dissonance happens strangely enough with less notes and consonance tends to happen with more notes and a few other points to note when it comes to naming chords you can name chords with respect to higher extended or jazz tension intervals as we call them that would be the 9s the 11s and the 13 now the 9 11 and 13 are not new notes they are basically played or named based on whether or not you have a 7 in the chord so if you have played a 7th chord let's say a c dominant 7th or a c major 7th or a c minor major 7th or a c minor 7th then the possibility of calling things or using the 9th or the flavor of the 9 11 and 13 and all of its variants like the 9 flat the 9 sharp the 11 sharp and the normal 11 the 13 a flat as well as the normal 13 all of that will come into play so 9 11 13 if you've heard of those words before these are called as jazz tensions or extended intervals or beyond the octave intervals as i sometimes like to call them um remember for those to be called 9 11 13 you need to have a, a third as well as a seventh in the chord more com- more important seventh but third is a given right uh, however when you call something as add you don't necessarily need a seventh if you call something as sus you don't necessarily need a seventh only when you say which is why this chord if you add the d you can say c major add 2 if you play the d on top also you can even continue to say c major add 2 uh, but if you play c major 7th and then add the d then you would start using the words 9 or uh, 11 in this case 11 sharp 13 okay now 9 is same as 2 but played an octave higher which is why 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 octave 9 is the same as 2 so 9 is 2 10 is 3 11 is 4 uh, 12 is 5 which we rarely call uh, and 13 is 6 okay so the things you need to remember are 9 11 and 13 uh, and in some cases even the 10th because we could voice a chord like this 1 5 10 So even though this is a C major chord I prefer to call it as a 10th chord or a 10th voicing or a spread chord spread triad where the 10th is above the octave so in cases where you want to deliberately play or stick out the 9 10 11 and 13 above the octave you might want to use the words 9 11 10 13 and also 9 11 13 specifically need a 7 for them to even be called that okay and last but not least in this broad categorization of chords you would have modal chords or modal triads or just modal sounds if you will so if you want to build a chord which speaks out or which gives you the flavor of a mode you need to find the representing note so if you take the lydian scale for example lydian is the same as major but has that unique sharp 4 so if you build this chord c e f sharp we call this a c major flat 5 you can call it that because it's a c major with a flat 5 it's that um uh simpson scott or the jetson scott they seem to like that interval or that chord anyway so that c major flat 5 but you could also call it a lydian chord you know now you could build a lydian chord maybe even with a root uh sharp 4 and a major 7th that also feels pretty lydian this generally considered more lydian uh what about phrygian 
it's a minor scale with a flattened two a natural minor with a flat two is phrygian now a phrygian chord a nice phrygian chord would be one two flat and perfect four because this gives you that it kind of motivates you to sing the phrygian and so on and so forth you could do the, an aeolian chord you can do an ionian chord you can do a mixolydian chord i suggest that at this stage there will be a lot of further study videos along with part 2 of this particular lesson which we are going to bring out as well right after part 1 so first watch part 1 then part 2 you will magically find it somewhere available on our youtube channel but to have that magic there's a subscribe button so go there and hit the subscribe then you will be notified whenever we release it however if you found that some of these concepts need to be dived further into for example a more deep dive into intervals uh, triads only triads uh seventh chords and uh, more importantly things like uh, tensions modes we have a lot of links which we'll put up in in the description but to be honest our channel does a lot of theory videos so it might be a lot to list in the description i suggest you go to our nathaniel school home page in the main page and look at all the relevant videos in neat playlists which we've put which we've compiled together for you to learn easily at different skill levels different subjects chapters and so on and so forth right so you have a bunch of chords and that's how you name them you have major minor diminished augmented suspended add versus suspended the sixth chord the seventh chord then the jazz tensions 9 11 13 and then of course modal harmony right so i'm going to cap off this lesson by actually whacking or playing a chord and we are going to try and figure out how we can name that chord what are the common mistakes we might end up doing and in the next part we are going to get into some more advanced naming techniques uh, how do you handle you know the the jazz tensions how do you handle quartal chords which is a very interesting subject how do you handle uh, certain kinds of unique voicings which are known in the industry and have a unique flavor like 6 9 poly chords slash chords is also something we we need to do so i wanted to conclude the lesson by giving you an actual chord a uh, rather weird chord and then let's work together to naming that particular chord so if i let me just find one and give you this sound okay so the first strategy when you're naming a chord is the root which is going to end up being the capital letter by which you name that chord right so if you look down at this it would be c right because c is the lowest note and i'm even repeating c and you can see that c is right at the bottom so you a student might sometimes get confused between calling this some kind of a c chord or the other way you might want to name a chord is could this have been now you're looking at c and this is a bit tricky now if you look at this structure i'm actually playing f major in the right hand with c with c as the bass note so now c is a slash it serves as a slash function as part of a slash chord in this case f major is f a c jumbled here as a c f but i'm presenting c as the lowest note and it's the lowest note which kind of pushes your ear to determine the sound of the chord or the vibe of the chord just to prove that you play f major with f in the bass see it's automatically a very calm chord you play f major with c in the bass it's no longer stable it's a tension similarly if you played a flat major with a c in the bass you may not want to get confused and say oh it's an a flat Uh, it's a c something chord no look at the right hand is the right hand or is the treble area a, an already known triad if it is an already known triad or maybe an already known seventh chord you can then uh, a, a, you know infer and say okay it's a a flat triad over c or a flat slash c this is very important so coming back to the chord i played you can't really 
uh, uh, dissect or decipher a triad right in the right hand i don't see any available triad there so it's most likely not a slash chord so this is c something now you might have a student who hears this and he may think that this is an a chord slash c he may end up saying this is an a minor because a's minor third is c uh, he may even call it an a minor add four uh, a minor add four yeah that's that kind of works if you think about it because a minor add four all those notes are there then he may say a minor add four flat nine slash c now who on earth would want to listen to the name or who on earth would even read that or bother to play it we'll then go back to staff notation to help us right you want the chord name to not only enable you to know your whereabouts on the piano you would also want it to inspire you to make music out of that maybe build a scale out of the chord we, we should look at the chord scale relationship right uh, where this is going next what type of chord is it now so if you called this a uh, again coming back to that weird name which may take me some time uh, a minor or a minor add 4 which is theoretically right a minor add 4 flat 9 slash c oh wow too difficult for me i'd rather just call this a c chord so now assuming it is a c chord c is in the bass isn't it the first thing i'd encourage you to do is in a piece of paper you write down one three five seven nine if any 11 if any 13 if any and that 9 would either be uh, flat 9 normal 9 or sharp 9 the 11 would be normal 11 or sharp 11 let's first identify all those things and as i build it you'll know and you need to put a tick or you need to write down whether you found it so i hope you've written that down 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 now is there a 1 obviously c write that down then is there a three now it may all be jumbled but you look here and say hey what is the three of c the answer could either be a major third e which it is or it could have even been a minor third uh, e flat which it is not so it's a major third e not the minor third e flat in there now is there a g in this chord now if there is no g you don't have to be worried it's it's well you should then check is there a g flat or is there a g sharp because if there is a g flat then it would make it a flat five and it could have even been a diminished chord if the third was minor right uh, and if there was a five sharp then it could be some kind of an augmented chord so there's no five so the assumption is we can discard the five we don't need the five so you can just assume okay the five of this chord would be g now coming to the seventh what are the seventh possibilities you could have a major seventh b which there isn't you could have a minor seventh b flat which there is you could have a diminished seventh a which there also is but we don't have to call it a diminished seventh because this is not a diminished triad in the first place it's kind of a major triad with a flat seven so it's definitely a c7 something c7 something and now the other notes so i've named the c i've named the b flat i've named the e i have not named the d and the a now what did i say when there is a seventh if i have some other additional note in this case i'm trying to consider d d would be called well you could argue add two but no there's a flat seven so when there is a seven we don't call it two we don't even need to say add we can just say c ninth c7 add 9 not needed we can just say c ninth but now i all i have an additional note which is the a we call that what now with respect to the c and the fact that there is a seventh we call it a c 13 okay so you could call this as c 13 or you could even say just to make it more clear you can say c 9 in brackets 13 to indicate that there is a 9 and there is a 13 so usually with the 13th chord 
you don't necessarily need the leaven but if ever you push in the leaven you can call this maybe c13 add leaven you could also call this as c13 sus because there's no uh, third in there but it depends really on how you voice it so if you tell someone c13 you need the 13 in there the 9 generally in there the 11th will be optional okay so a lot of these chord extensions and a lot of these fancy names end up happening over the dominant seventh chord or the dominant in, in seventh interval more of which the naming we are going to cover in the next part so do stay tuned for that so this particular chord was c13 or c913 you can call it a c913 if you wish remember it has a flat seven so this is pretty much how you name any chord there are a few more bells and whistles with regards to chords so we'll cap that off in the next part hope you found the lesson useful and uh, to, to get the next part, don't forget to hit the su subscribe. You'll get access to a lot more videos on our YouTube channel for free, right? So why not hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Catch you in the next video. Cheers.